Another episode of Things I've Learned While Dating in My 30s. This one might ruffle a few feathers. Listen to what that man is actually saying. If that man says that I do not want a relationship right now, that man does not want a relationship right now. And you are not gonna change his mind. So right now you have two options. One, you can stick it out. Like, you know what? I'm tired of being single. I want to have some fun. I want a little kiki. And that's fine. Do your little kiki. Be here for a fun time, not a long time. Something in between time. But at the end of the day, remember, he does not want a relationship. You're going to have to remember that because there are going to be moments where you're going to feel special. You're going to be like, oh my gosh, this feels like this is a girlfriend kind of action. He gave me a little rose and everything. Honey, that rose started out as a bouquet. At the end of the day, he does not want a relationship. Remember that. Your second option is that you can just leave him alone from the beginning. May God bless you and keep you away from me. Because you are special, but you are not that special. You might think that you are a dope ass chick, but you are not going to change that man's mind. That man has been in the streets, has now become for the streets, and he's having fun in the streets. And you are not going to be that one special girl out of a hundreds and thousands of girls that's gonna change his mind so let him go listen to when they say i don't want a relationship right now yeah i think that she's 100 percent right um if i'm just being completely objective she is 100 percent right i think that women hear what they want to hear because they want what they want and i think that's also when we say that when a woman chooses it's nothing that you can do about it. Let me add a little bit more context in here and some background information so that you guys can better understand exactly what's going on, right? Guys, well, let me start with women. Women to a larger extent, and this is why we tell guys a lot of times that it doesn't matter whether you got money or not got money. It don't matter what your socioeconomic status is or not. Once a guy imprint on a woman, she practically his forever if he ever wants her again, right? And that's why a lot of times we tell girls that the guy that you should have married, you probably already missed out on him because he's evolved into something completely different and why you should date based off of potential, especially when you're younger because that's all you have is potential, right? And so once a guy starts really, really becoming self-aware and his greatness becomes uh, more evident to him, you have less of a chance for him to pick you out of all of the women that he then has the option to pick because the the older he gets and the greater he becomes, especially for the guys that become high value. Now, of course, this doesn't apply to every single guy, but the older that he gets and more self-aware he becomes, the more he realizes that he has to vet based off of where he's going and not where he's at, right? So when you think about a lot of women – and then they try to change a man, right? Once he's imprinted on you, it's over. And a woman then chooses based off of the fact that she's automatically tied to him forever. Like a lot of women call it soul ties, but in reality, it's really just that women become extra emotional about the guy that they really, really want. And so they, then they get mad at society or they get mad at other guys because he's not changing. He's not going to change. He's going to become more of what he already is. And so if he did not already choose you or select you, then chances is he will not settle for you. And that's when guys, again, I'm going back to the original conversations of guys becoming more aware. When they become self-aware, they don't settle anymore, right? The only time that you really see guys start to make some modifications or some decisions when they start to become self-aware and they become greater, and usually this becomes guys that's maybe in a late thirties, because you just really start to figure out who you are in your thirties or when you start to become or get close to 30 in your late thirties, early forties. Um, and then you don't even get to your top of your, your earning potential and your greatness until you in your late fifties, early sixties. The thing about it, the only time that I've ever seen guys start to settle down or to even be able to, um, you know, make some modifications as to what they're going to do as far as a lifestyle is in two situations. The first one is if he decides that he wants kids. Some guys will 
you know, just be with you for a long time and not even marry you. But then at the same time, if he decides that he wants kids, it's a stronger possibility that he's going to rock with somebody that he's been rocking with for a long time, even if he just been dealing with her and he hasn't necessarily married her, but he's been kind of in and out of her life and playing girlfriend or whatever, and they just have this great relationship regardless of how many other people he's talked to, right? That's the first situation. The second situation is if, um, you know, he just meets somebody that he's just organically in a situation with or he just organically rock with and he chooses her. But he's never going to, as he ages and as he gets older, he's never going to settle for you. That is a game for younger men. Younger men tend to settle, which is why a lot of women from other cultures then get with black men and they always say, well, why, you know, white girls get with a black guy or whatever. Um, they don't know who they are yet. They don't realize what they are yet. And so even a conversation that she's having, she's having conversations. And again, she prefaces by saying that as a woman that is dating in her 30s, she is having this conversation from the perspective of a person that maybe is dating or has dated guys that are starting to become self-aware and they realize how great they are, or how much greater they're going to become based off of who it is that they're dealing with, right? And so those type of guys, they're not going to change for you. They're going to change for themselves. Let me say it one more time. They're not going to change for a woman. The guys that I see that change for a woman at that age, they change for a woman, meaning that they're not evolving into becoming a greater version of themselves. That means that they're settling for whatever it is that's in front of them based off of the requirements of a woman they crash out. A hundred times out of a hundred, they crash out, right? They may be influenced as people around them or whatever, but those type of guys crash out. Let me get back to the core of what she's saying. Women don't listen. They don't. They hear what they want to hear based off of what they want. And so then that's when you start to see women become bitter because then they act like it's the man's fault when a man, more times than not, more often than not, have already communicated to you who he is and what he's going to do. Guys, contrary to popular belief, because this, the, the society will sell you on the fact that, well, you know, she didn't know when she got finessed. Listen, I'm not going for it with all of these women that's coming to you and saying, oh, I had a child out of wedlock or he changed up on me. Listen, that is 100 percent bullshit. He did not change. Whoever it is that you got pregnant by, whoever it is that you spent a whole lot of time in a relationship with, you were hoping. But he told you, he showed you, and he communicated to you exactly who he is and what he's been doing. And so I don't believe that all of these women are disillusioned. I don't think that these guys is just tricking these chicks out of their draws in long-term relationships or having children with them. Most of the time, these guys already have children. Or they've already been living a lifestyle that you're hoping that they're changed. I'll give you an example, a public one, right? We all know, and I'm going to just use this one because just for the sake of conversation, but I ain't even coming at it right now. We all know who Future was. But every single woman, including all of the Sierras and Joey Chavez and all of these stuff, they all go and get pregnant by him. We know who they are. Every single one, every person in the world know who Future is. This is no secret. But yet women still choose to go and get with him and then they sit there and have a conversation with other women acting like guys ain't nothing. No, it's a small minority guys that's populating the majority of women. And most men, regardless of whether they have children or not, they are the same person. They are no different whatsoever. And so when we hear this narrative or we see women continue to complain about the state of men or relationships or whatever, they taking their frustrations out on all of us. But the reality is that it's a small minority of men or those men that she were dealing with already had communicated with in one way or another because you can see it in a lifestyle and communication is also what you do, 90% body language. They've already shown you and communicated exactly who they are. And so what you're doing is now projecting your own problems and insecurities and inability to be able to actually make a smart decision versus the thing that you really wanted because you was feeling D and he imprinted on you and you shouldn't have you shouldn't have been having children out of wedlock or you shouldn't have been having sex before you married anyway. But we so far are so outside of that purpose that everybody is remixing what a relationship is supposed to be, which is why you see women still dating in their 30s and they have not gotten chosen. But the reality is that guys tell you, they show you and they they know who they are and they're not trying to finesse you at all. It's a small minority of men that are in a long-term relationship or you're dealing with for a longer period of time 
that is trying to finesse you. She used an example about a flower, right? That's just him being nice. That don't mean that he's trying to marry you. We will be very, very clear in telling you who we, as a matter of fact, most guys that get married much later, let's say that they're dating a woman for five years or more and then they wind up proposing or getting married to her, he eventually guilted himself into it most of the time, but he's just been with her so long and he's been hearing her communicate so long that she want to be married that eventually he'll give in. But that's just because of familiarity. We all know whether or not we want to marry that chick very shortly after we didn't already interacted with her. It's not a hard decision. Now, whether he followed through with it or whatever, that's a completely different conversation. But I'm curious to hear what you guys think about this conversation. I think that she's 100 percent right and that most women don't listen. And we are very clear with who it is that we are, whether you a side chick, a main chick, a, ch a chick that's just been dealing with a dude for a long time, whether he's just not interested in being in a relationship and he just out here just doing what he want to do when he want to do it. it. It's not his fault. It's the person that chose to be with him because we're not disillusioned about who we deal with. And vice versa, even though we're not talking about women, we know the chicks that's for the street. We don't necessarily need to know your body count, but we had that conversation in order to emphasize to you how important body count is and how many men you sleep with. Let me know what y'all think inside of the comments. Make sure y'all tap into the Patreon. We got Stock Club in the morning. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Let me read these comments. I'm out.